Hey friends, this is Trish with Crafting Cousins. Kay and I would like to thank you for stopping by and supporting our channel. In today's video, we've got 20 budget-friendly DIY hacks for your spring home decor. So sit back, relax, and let's craft y'all. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this wood bead wreath that I got from the Dollar Tree. You can also get these at Hobby Lobby if you would like something a little bit bigger. A wood welcome word, you can get these at any craft store, including Walmart. Some florals from Walmart and from the Dollar Tree. Some chalk paint in white and ballet slipper pink. Some wood glue and my glue gun and some glue sticks. I'm gonna start off by painting my wood bead wreath. I'm using a chippy brush and my white chalk paint. I didn't want this to be a solid paint job. I want it to look old and weathered, so I'm gonna give it several coats of paint, but I'm not going to worry about filling it in. Now, if you want a solid look, you can take these beads off, put them in a bag with some paint, mush them around, and then leave them to dry. But as I said, I did not want these to be solid so I'm just going to go over them roughly and let them dry while my beads are drying I'm going to come back with a small paintbrush and my white chalk paint and paint my welcome word now for this I am only painting the top I do like to have those sides to stay with that dark color that they come with so I'm trying not to get the paint on the sides now that my paint is dry on my wood beads, I'm coming back with my chippy brush and some of that ballet slipper pink, and I'm going to go over my beads again. I am still keeping this a rough paint. I don't want them to be a solid color. I want it to look like it's been painted several times and left outside and got really weathered. I did end up getting too much of the pink on it for me, so I did come back at the end and touch it up with some more white. Now I'm going to attach my wood word to my bead wreath and I'm just using some wood glue and some hot glue on the areas that are going to touch and then I press them down and let it set. Now we can add our greenery and our florals. Now for my greenery, I did decide to come in and use some floral wire. You can get this at the Dollar Tree and to me it's going to hold better. I did consider using hot glue but hot glue can pop off especially if it gets too cold or too hot and the wire is going to hold these in place now the other good thing about using the floral wire is that if you decide to change it out for other seasons it's easy to take it off once I got my greenery on there, I'm going to come back in and I'm cutting off some of these little white flowers that came from the Dollar Tree and I'm using a little bit of hot glue and sticking them into my other greenery. This is just going to hold it in place. I use one of these white pieces out of a bunch that I had gotten from Joann Fabrics. I'm not sure in the end whether I really like that piece, but it's in there for now. And then I'm going to come back with some of these zinnias from Walmart and I'm just going to cut those down and kind of lay them out figure out where I want them at this point I was still trying to decide if I wanted to add a bow to this but I decided that I liked it with just the florals so then I'm going to come back in with my hot glue and I'm still trying to keep these glued to my greenery instead of to my wreath so I just kind of put glue on the little stems of it and then press it down now on the three that's in the middle I did trim those stems off really close to the base and I put quite a bit of hot glue on there and then stuck them in and once you get your flowers in this project is complete hey friends thanks for stopping by don't miss our latest videos every Wednesday and Sunday at 7 p.m.
Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use one of these self-adhesive wall tiles from the Dollar Tree. Some wire. I don't know what gauge this is. I just know that it's really flexible. I got this from the Dollar Tree. Some Waverly white chalk paint. A piece of floral foam. I'm repurposing this from another project and some florals of choice. Now I'm repurposing these from other projects as well, but you can use whatever you like. And my glue gun and some glue sticks. The first thing I'm going to do is make my little pocket. And I thought this tile was too wide. We are going to be folding it in half. So I decided to cut it down. I'm going to cut on either side of those lines, just leaving that center piece with all of the detail in it. I love all this detail and I am going to save these pieces that I'm cutting off because I'm sure I can use them in another project. Now we're just going to flip it over and separate the adhesive part from the tile and cut that off because we want it to be open. We don't want it to stick together. Now we're just going to fold it in half and I do use a bone folder just to get that crisp edge, but you don't have to do that. You can just fold it in half. Then I'm going to take my glue gun and put a line of glue on either side and press it together and this is going to seal and we have our little pocket. Now that I have my pocket, I am going to give it a good coat of paint. I'm using Waverly chalk paint in white. I like that the chalk paint sticks to this really well and I only needed two coats. If you use acrylic, it can be really streaky and you might end up needing more coats. I gave two coats to the front and the back and allowed it to dry. And then once it was completely dry, I'm coming back with a fine grit sandpaper and I'm going to go over all of that detail on there and just make it pop out. I wanted to be able to see it. Now you do this to taste. You can go over as heavy or as light as you want. I did do a pretty heavy distressing on it because I love that look. And I also distressed the back of my pocket. That way it looked the same on both sides. Now that I'm happy with my distressing, I'm going to take that piece of floral foam and I'm just slicing off two little pieces. I didn't want it to be too thick. I just wanted to have something to kind of open up my pocket and something for my flowers to stick down into. Now I'm going to cut off a piece of that wire. You just measure it to how long you want your handle to be. And I'm going to wrap it around my paintbrush handle. And this is just going to give it some curls and make it more interesting. I do pull those out until I like how it looks. And then we're going to punch a hole in each side of our pocket that we can put our wire through. And I'm just using one of those punch things that you get from the Dollar Tree for that. Now we'll stick our wire through one side and then I'm gonna use a smaller paintbrush, wrap it around, and then I just push it all up together and it gives you a little knot there in the front. I think it looks really cute that way. Then we're gonna do the other side the same way. Just push your wire through there, twist it around your paintbrush and push it into a knot. And you have a cute little handle for your pocket. Now for the fun part, we get to decorate. Now this is totally to taste. You see us do this a lot. We love florals on this channel and we have never claimed to be florists. We just kind of stick things in until we like how it looks. And I think that's the beauty of doing florals anyway. I love having them in my home and I just kind of stick it in. If I don't like how it looks, I pull it out and put it in another place. And then once you get those flowers in place and you're happy with how it looks this project is complete very simple lightweight and very pretty
Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this old frame that I got from the thrift store. This is my second time upcycling this as I used it in a project last year as well. Some old florals that I keep in a box. Whenever I take pieces apart, I throw them in this box so that I can use them in other projects. Some floral foam, some paddle wire from the Dollar Tree, some ribbon, I got mine from Hobby Lobby, a little bird that I picked up from the thrift store, some Waverly chalk paint in white, some Spanish moss from the Dollar Tree, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. The first thing I'm gonna do is work on my little bird. I love this little bird, but I didn't like how shiny he was, and I wanted to give him some texture. So I grabbed my chalk paint, and I'm using a brush, and I'm stippling it on. Now, with him being so slick and shiny, if you try to just paint it on, you're gonna get lots of streaks, and you're gonna have to have several coats to cover it. I see Sammy do this technique all the time, and I absolutely love it. So I stippled on a coat, let it dry, gave it another coat, and set it aside to completely dry. While that is drying, I'm going to work on my frame. I'm taking my floral foam and cutting it down to fit, and then I'm going to use some hot glue to attach it right there at the bottom, kind of going up. Now you see that it broke and that's fine. This is just a base and I wanted to make sure that it fit all the way around my frame. I'm also going to use some paddle wire to hold this down so that it doesn't pop off once I start adding my florals to it. Now we can start decorating our frame. And the thing that I like to do first is to lay my florals out. I like to see how they look, if it's going to overwhelm it, if they go together. This just keeps me from having to stick it in, pull it back out and completely destroy my floral foam. You, once you get an idea of how you want things to look, then you can start putting it in with glue. So I'm just laying it all out and now I'll pull it out and I'll start attaching it. Now I do put my pieces into the floral foam, but I was afraid that that wasn't going to hold it all by itself. And there's some pieces that just don't meet at the bottom, like that one piece I just glued in. So I do use a little bit of hot glue to hold things in place, but I don't use a lot of hot glue because I might want to use this frame again. And if you don't put a ton of hot glue on there or permanent glue, you can use it again because it'll just pop right back off. I continue to put my pieces in, gluing them down, cutting them down however they need to. Sometimes I don't like how a piece looks. Those big green leaves I thought just kind of overpowered it. So I pull them back out and I use something else because this is totally to taste. You do it the way you like it. If it makes you happy, then that's the right way to do it. We'll continue to put these in. I cut them down. I glue pieces on top of other pieces. I'm trying to kind of get a good base over my floral foam. For these leaves that I'm adding here, they probably needed some floral pins, but I didn't have any, so I kind of made my own. I just cut off some of this um, paddle wire and I turn it into like a hook shape and then push it down in there and that gives that extra hold so that it won't pop off. Now we're going to start on our bird nest. I took some of my Spanish moss and I'm just kind of pulling it out and gluing it on top of my floral foam. This is going to cover it. It's going to give a base for my bird and it also looks like a bird's nest. Bird's nests are not formed perfectly. Now we are going to make a bow for this. I took my ribbon and I'm just looping it over itself. You see that I'm counting here to make sure I've got two loops on each side. Then I'm going to cut off one more piece to act as the tails of my bow. I'll put it behind these and then we're going to scrunch it up in the center and use some of our paddle wire to wrap around it really tight, twist it in the back and trim it off. Now you have a bow. All we have to do is start fluffing it out and trim it up. I fluff out those loops on each side and I'm going to pull these tails down till they look like I want them to. Then we'll take our scissors and cut them at an angle and dovetail those ends just to give it a more finished look. I'm going to take one of those pieces that I cut off and wrap it around the center of my bow using some hot glue to secure it. This is going to cover up that paddle wire that we had on there 
and it's going to give it a finished look. I'll use a little bit of hot glue and attach it right to the front of my bird's nest. The last thing we need to do is add our little bird. I'm gonna use some hot glue on the bottom, sit him on top of the bird's nest, and once you do that, this project is finished. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this little frame that I got from Goodwill Outlet for 39 cent. Some of this old curtain that I got from the thrift store, but if you don't have one of these, you could just use some muslin and regular lace, some calico fabric from my stash, some Waverly chalk paint in plaster, an old piece of cardboard, some Mod Podge, my glue gun and some glue sticks, and some sandpaper from the Dollar Tree. So the first thing I did was take out the glass. We don't need that. And then I took my Waverly chalk paint and I gave my frame a really good coat of the paint. It actually took about a coat and a half to get really good coverage. Now I did also paint the back of this because it was in pretty bad shape. The paper was peeled off and I like for my backs to look finished. While that's drying, I took my cardboard and I took the glass from the picture frame and used it as a template and then just took my Zacto knife and cut out a rectangle of cardboard. Now I'm going to use my Mod Podge and I put down a really good coat. It is kind of heavy, but not too thick. And then I took that curtain and ripped off a strip of it and pressed it down onto the front of my cardboard. I smoothed out all of the wrinkles and then just trimmed around it. And now I'm gonna take a piece of lace from that same curtain. I just clipped the little stitches that were on there and this comes off into a flat piece. And I'm gonna use my hot glue to glue it down. Now you do want to make sure that you pull it smooth and don't have any wrinkles in it and then I just trim it off as well. Now we're gonna take our calico and make a flower. I measure in about an inch and make a clip with my scissors and then I just rip it off. Now I'm gonna tie a knot into the end of it. People do this all different kinds of ways, but this is my favorite way. And then I glue the tail back down to the side of it. Now I'm just going to take my fabric and I twist it around and then I put a little bit of hot glue down and roll it around the center and this becomes a flower. This is the same technique that we used when we made the flowers for the shabby chic wreath and you can make these in so many different ways. People do it all kinds of ways. A lot of people like to fold their centers, but I just prefer to tie mine because I think it's easier. And you just keep, you know, rolling around it, put a little bit of fa uh, fabric glue or hot glue, I'm using hot glue, until you get the size of the flower that you want. Once I get it where I want it, I clip off the end and then I put some hot glue on the back and glue that tail down and there's our flower. I thought this needed a little something extra, so I cut off some of these little pearls. I do end up only using three of them and I glue them right to the center. Now you could also use a button or leave this plain. Now I'm just going to glue my flower right to the center of my cardboard. I wanted this to be shabby chic, so I took some of my sandpaper and I just kind of go around it and sand off on the edges and over those flowers. I want that detail to pop and some of that gold to come back through. I love this look and I think it makes it look so vintage and antique looking. Now we'll just pop our piece right back into the frame and close it up and I'm gonna let mine lean but I thought that I would show you how to make a hanger for this if you don't have a hanger. I just take a piece of twine and I tie a knot in the end. I put some hot glue down and then I stick it down into that and then I flood the top with some more hot glue. Now I'm just gonna use a small piece of that muslin that I had left over and put over the top and this really seals it in and gives it strength. 
and there's our finished piece. I love how this one turned out. It is as simple as it can be, but it looks so beautiful and shabby chic. For this planter, I'm going to use this tin can that I got from Goodwill Outlet. I loved the detail that was on the side of it and it was only 39 cents. Planters can be really expensive, so I love finding stuff like this at the thrift store that we can use. Some wood finials. I think I got these from Joann's, but they could have come from Hobby Lobby. Some Waverly chalk paint in pool blue. Some super glue wood glue from the Dollar Tree and my glue gun and some glue sticks. So the first thing I knew I needed to do was add some holes to the bottom of this tin. So I'm going to use my awl. I got this one from Hobby Lobby. They have them every other week for 50% off. So it's only $2.50. And these things work like a charm. They will punch a hole in almost anything. It went through this tin almost like butter. I actually have two of them. I have one that I use for stuff like this. And then I have one that I use for paper projects. We put five holes in the bottom of our tin and now I'm going to use four of those finials and I'm going to use some wood glue and some hot glue and attach them to the bottom of this as feet. It's going to lift up my planter a little bit so that it's not sitting down in the water and it also gives it some more decoration. I love how these were carved. Once I get my feet on there, I'm going to take my Waverly chalk paint and give this a really good coat of paint. Now for this one, I decided to go with this pool blue color. I just love it. It goes on really light and you think, well, it's not a whole lot different than the white, but when it dries, it comes out this gorgeous blue color. I gave the whole thing a really good coat and I did paint the rim of this, but I tried not to get any paint on the inside. Once this was dry, I took a piece of sandpaper and I'm just gonna kinda go over it and highlight all that detail that's on there. Now in one place, I did get a little heavy handed, but that didn't bother me because I think it still turned out really pretty. You do this to your taste. And I also went over the inside of this to make sure I didn't have any paint on the inside. I want it to have that bright white color. Now I'm going to take some Waverly Clear Wax and go over my paint and let it dry and then I'll buff it out. This is just going to protect my chalk paint for whenever I am watering my plants just in case some of the water splashes over. Now we're ready to add our plant. I'm gonna add in some of my soil. Then I'm gonna take this beautiful little miniature rose I got from Walmart. I loosen up those roots, put it down in there, add some more soil, making sure that I pack it down. Then we're gonna add a little bit of water. And with that, this project is finished. For this project, we're going to use this oblong frame that I got from Goodwill Outlet for 79 cents. This was made really well, but I really love the detail work that is around the outside of it. Some five gallon paint stirrer sticks. I needed eight and these come three to a pack, but fortunately I had two that I had left over from another project that were cut and painted some flowers and some greenery. My granddaughter gave me the flowers. The greenery came from Walmart. Some Waverly chalk paint in truffle and white. One of these windmill welcome signs from the Dollar Tree. I got this one last year, but they have them this year as well. My mini tabletop saw that I got from Harbor Freight. If you don't have one, you could use pruning shears or a handheld saw, a heavy duty staple gun, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. So the first thing I needed to do was remove the backing on this. It was glued down really well. So I just split around that seam and pulled off as much of the paper as I could. Then we're going to remove the staples and take out all of the insides. I don't need the insides, but I will save the cardboard for another project. Once we got everything out of the frame, I went to work trying to take off as much of that paper as I could. And then I just took my sanding block and sanded it down until it was smooth. 
Now I'm going to take my Waverly white chalk paint and I'm going to paint my entire frame. I love this detail, so I didn't want my paint to puddle up in it. So you see that I'm kind of doing a spouncing effect. I just kind of bounce up and down to keep the paint from puddling. And I do paint the front, the back, and all the sides. I am not going to be distressing this piece. I know that probably surprises you, but for this one, I wanted it to have that bright white against the background. So we will just be doing a solid coat and then setting this aside to dry. While that's drying, we're gonna work on the back of this. These painted paint sticks were already the right length, so I'm going to use one of them to mark all my other sticks. Then I will take my little mini saw and I'm going to cut these down. We get so many questions about this little mini saw. We got them from Harbor Freight for about $35 and we absolutely love them. But if you don't have one, you can cut these with some heavy pruning shears or even a handheld saw. Now I'm going to stain my paint sticks. As I said before, I didn't want to use regular stain because it bothers my allergies and with it being rainy, it takes so long to dry. So I'm just using my truffle paint that I have watered down. There was only a little bit left in this jar. So I just put some water in there and shook it up and then we're going to stain these on the front, back and sides and leave them to dry. Once we put our paint sticks on the back of our frame, it's going to cause it to be indented because this frame was raised a little bit. So I'm using some tumbling tower blocks and some half beads on the back of my windmill so that I can glue it down without pressing it too far down in there. Then I'm going to use my white Waverly chalk paint and my chippy brush and just go over my windmill to give it a more rustic look. Now we can apply our paint sticks to the back of our frame. I laid them out so I would know that they fit. Then I just flip one over. I put a dot of my wood glue on each end and then I use some hot glue to hold it in place so that my wood glue can cure. We're going to do this all the way across making sure that that um, ruler looking thing is facing you so that you won't see it once you have finished this. Now we're just gonna take our heavy duty staple gun and go around the edges and give it some extra security. And then while we're back there, we're gonna find the center and we'll go ahead and put that hanger right back into the middle of this. All I had to do was tap it down with my hammer. Once I started laying out my flowers and my greenery, I realized that because of that little ledge that the frame makes, I needed to take some tumbling tower blocks and put them on the bottom to give my greenery something to adhere to. I'm sorry that I was kind of out of camera range on this. I thought I had it pushed up more than I did, but all I did was glue my greenery down facing each way. Then I took three of those flowers and cut them down and I'm going to glue them right in the middle of my greenery. Now we can take our windmill and center it up. Then I'm just going to use some hot glue on the back of it and glue it right down into the center of my frame. I decided that my greenery needed a little more fullness so I cut a couple pieces of that ivy and glued that down behind my flowers and with that this project was finished. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to use the inside of an embroidery hoop. This one is six inches, but you can use any size that you would like. Some wooden beads. How many you need will depend on how large your embroidery hoop is and the size of your beads. I'm using nine. I have eight small ones and one medium size. Some lace ribbon from the Dollar Tree some floral stems. You can use anything you like. I ended up using these little purple lavender ones and my glue gun and some glue sticks. This project is so simple, but it comes out so cute. All you're gonna do is remove your inner hoop, put the outer hoop up somewhere. We'll end up using it in another project. 
and then you're going to take your wooden beads and you're going to fit them across you want them to touch from one side to the other once you know how many you need all you're going to do then is put a little bit of hot glue on one side of your hoop and put your bead in it now make sure that the whole of this is going up and down we're going to put our little floral stems through there so you want to make sure that your holes are straight now i am using a little ruler across here but the only purpose for this ruler is to keep my beads from rolling around i want them to stay in place until that glue sets I just keep going across from one side to the other. I put a little dab of glue on one side of my bead and then I stick it into the other one and let it set. When you get to that last bead, you're gonna put a drop of glue on each side and then glue it to the other side of your embroidery hoop. Now we're gonna take some of our lace ribbon and make a hanger. I just figured out how far I wanted it to hang down and I cut a piece off and folded it in half. Then you're gonna put a little bit of hot glue on the underside and glue the lace ribbon into it. I'm gonna tie a knot in the top of this and trim off my ends and I have my hanger. Now you're just going to decorate it. You can use any florals that you want to use. I found that the longer, skinnier ones look better in this. So that's how I ended up using these little lavender pieces. I think I got this from the Dollar Tree. I just cut off some pieces. You see, I end up taking some of the leaves off because I want them to stick all the way through. And then I just put them through my beads. Now you can fill all of your beads. You can skip some beads and have some breathing room in here. I actually thought it looked pretty that way, but you know me, I can't leave anything alone. So I grabbed some of this greenery I had and I ended up cutting some little pieces of it and filling in the middle and this project was finished. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use a teacup that I picked up from the thrift store, some Spanish moss from the Dollar Tree, a small piece of scrapbook paper, a key charm that I had in my stash. You can get these at any craft store, some Model Magic air dry clay I got from the Dollar Tree, some distressing ink and a dauber, and some paint in light blue and some watered down white paint. So the first thing I'm going to do is make some little eggs to go in a nest. I'm using this Model Magic air dry clay. I picked it up from the Dollar Tree a while back. I think they also sell it at Walmart. Um, it's about dried out and I'm kind of wanting to use it, but I just kept playing with it in my hands and I finally got it where it was pliable. Now all I'm doing is pinching off a small piece and then I kind of roll it around until it becomes almost like a little log or something. And then I kind of pinch it at the end and form it into a small egg. I want three eggs to go in my little nest. Now once I get these formed, I'll set them aside and let them dry. Once my little eggs are dry, I'm going to come back and I'm painting mine with some light blue paint. Now you can paint yours any color you want. I just love the little blue eggs that have the white speckles on them. So that's why I decided to paint mine with the blue paint. Now once the blue paint's dry, I'm going to come back with some watered down white paint and a stiff brush and I just kind of flick it onto the eggs and it gives it those little speckle looks like you normally find on eggs in a nest. While our paint is completely drying, I'm going to take my piece of scrapbook paper and I'm just tearing it down to make a little sign. Now, yes, I know there's not signs and keys in nest, but this is just a decorative piece to sit in my home. I love the wispy edges when you tear it. So I just hold it under a ruler and then lift it and it tears. And then I like to come back with some ink and a dauber and define those edges. It really really makes it pop out and that's just a personal preference of mine. 
Now I'm going to take a pencil and I'm just going to sketch in the word nest. You don't have to do this. I do this so that I make sure that I get my dimensions right. And then once I'm happy with it, I come back with my little marker and fill it in. Now you could just as easily just take your marker and write it on. Again, this is just a little piece to sit in my home. I love being able to put together pieces you normally wouldn't and sticking them in on little shelves or something just as a touch of spring. Now I'm going to take some Spanish moss and stick it down in my cup. I'm forming a nest and yes, it is messy. I just keep playing with it though because I don't want everything to fall down into it. I sit my little sign in there and then I tried to put my key but it was a little heavy so I had to keep playing with it. We're going to add our three eggs and then once you get everything arranged that's all there is to this. It's ready to sit on a shelf or a bookcase and become part of your spring decor. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to use one of these small cloche domes that I got from the Dollar Tree, a candlestick from the Dollar Tree, some beads of choice. I'm gonna use these little glass beads, a small lamb, I got this from the toy section in Hobby Lobby, a cross I got from the jewelry section at Hobby Lobby, something to string your beads on. I'm gonna use this iridescent string on this piece from Hobby Lobby. This small glass jar that I got from a thrift store. We'll use either the top or the bottom, not sure yet. Some sheet moss from Walmart. Some white spray paint and my glue gun and some glue sticks. So the first thing we're gonna do is take our cloche outside and we're gonna spray paint the bottom of this. I wanted to make it white so it went better with my crystal. I did about three coats and I left it to dry. Once that piece is dry, we're gonna take our sheet moss and I want to fit it into the lip of that cloche. So just kind of lay it on there, see how it fits, trim it down, going in a circular motion. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I did have to piece a piece in, but that's okay. It won't show once it's glued down. Once you're happy with it, then you're just gonna use some hot glue in the bottom and then put your moss right in there and this is gonna hold perfectly. Once you get that in there, make sure you go around and trim it off really well. Now I'm gonna take that little lamb and I pushed him down in there and made some indentions. Then I'm just gonna use some hot glue on his feet and glue him down so he doesn't move. I love this. We're gonna take the top of our cloche and put it on top and snap it down. Then we're going to take that little bottle, and you can see I looked at both pieces. I thought that the bottom balanced it out more, so I'm gonna use some hot glue and glue it right to the top of this. Then remove any excess glue. Now we can take our candlestick. We're gonna put some more hot glue on top of it. I was pretty generous with this. Then you're gonna put your cloche on there, center it up, and hold it until it sets. Now we're going to string up our beads. I decided to go with these glass beads because I liked how it looked with that candlestick. How many beads you use really depends on the size of beads that you're using and how long you want your garland to hang down. I went in a pattern of two small beads, one larger bead, until I had gotten about, I don't know, six or eight inches of this. It wasn't very long, I didn't measure it. All I did was kind of loop it together and then test it to see how far it was gonna hang down and made sure I liked it. Now we're just going to take it and tie it into a knot. You don't want it too loose because you don't want your beads to separate, but you do want a, enough looseness in there that it will hang properly. Now we're gonna take our cross. I took the jump ring out, strung it onto my string, and then tie it into a double knot. Then we're just gonna trim off the ends of that, put a little drop of hot glue, and hang it on our piece, and once we do that, this project is finished. Hey 
Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to try to use this old wreath form that I found at Goodwill. It's in bad shape, but we're going to try to recycle it. Some wooden beads, both small and large, some twine, some white tulle from Hobby Lobby, a small cross I found at Goodwill, but I've also seen these at Hobby Lobby, some florals from my stash, I'm not sure how many I'll be using yet, some floral wire, some twine, some ribbon from the Dollar Tree, my glue gun and some glue sticks, and some tools from my work caddy. So the first thing I did was start to work on this wreath form. It was in really bad shape and it was falling apart as I was messing with it, but I wanted to try to recycle it. I didn't want to have to go to town and buy a new wreath form. So I took all of this old greenery out of it and the stems that were left over, and I didn't really like how it was sticking out in all these different directions. So I thought that I would try to tie it down and make it look more like a grapevine wreath. So I took some of this black baker's twine that I had on hand and I tied it around one end of it. And then I just go around the wreath and I push down all those branches and I wrap my twine around it. Now you can see that this was falling apart and I probably should have just given up, but I'm stubborn and I didn't want to have to go into town. So I just kept working at it and I finally did get something that I was able to use. I did try using regular twine with this and floral wire, but they both stood out too starkly against this wreath form. So I found that this black baker's twine that I had on hand worked out perfectly. I just kept going around and around until I got it formed into kind of a circle. And then I take my string and I tie it off to itself and tie it into a double knot. And this actually held it perfectly. Now I'm going to work on my cross just a little bit. I took the sticker off the back of it, even though it was kind of stubborn. <laughs> and I took the twine out of it because this is really just too thick. Now I'm going to take some thinner twine and I thread it onto a large darning needle. I put it through my cross and then I take the other end of the twine and thread it through the darning needle as well. Now I'm going to take four of my small white wooden beads and three of my large wooden beads. These large beads were a natural color and I like that, but for this one I wanted it to be pink. So I grabbed my Waverly chalk paint in the color Ballet Slipper Pink. I put my beads onto a skewer to hold them and I gave them a really good coat of paint. Once they were dry, I threaded them onto my twine using the small, the large, the small, the large. Then I tied a knot into the end and trimmed it off. Now we're going to start to work on our wreath. I took some of these beautiful rose picks. I think I got these from the Dollar Tree. And I cut them apart and then I just kind of stuck them down in between the branches of this wreath. It's pretty thick through there, so I really didn't have to use any glue to hold this part. Once I got those in there, I cut apart the other set and I stick them going the other way, making sure that I leave a gap in between these because I'm going to be putting a bow there. Now I'm going to take some of these pretty white flowers that I actually got from the thrift store. I'm not sure what they are, but they are so pretty. And I cut them apart and I put one piece up at the top and I did have to use some floral wire to secure this because it kept sticking up. And then I take another piece of it and I put it down at the bottom. Again, I got these at the thrift store, so I'm not sure where they actually came from originally, but I've seen something similar at the Dollar Tree. Now I'm going to take some of this baby's breath from the Dollar Tree and I cut one little bunch and stick it in up at the top. And then I cut another small bunch and stick it in at the bottom. I'm going to take a little piece of this burlap and lace ribbon from the Dollar Tree and wrap it right there around the middle in that gap that I left and secure it with some hot glue. This is going to cover those stems and it also gives me a base for my bow. I took that white tool from the Hobby Lobby and I cut five pieces at 36 inches long and then I just wrap it right there around the middle of it and tie it into a bow. I love the way this tool looks when you tie it into a bow. 
I take each individual section and I fluff it out and this gives me a nice fluffy bow right there in the center of my wreath. To attach my cross, I take my twine and thread it underneath my bow and then I just use some hot glue to secure it right to my wreath form. And then we just fluff our bow right back out and we are finished with this piece. Well, I actually did add a hanger to this. Somehow I lost the footage for that. I guess my camera may have died. All I did was take a piece of twine, thread it through the branches on the back of the wreath, tie a knot and trim it, and that gave me a little hanger. And there's our finished piece. I really love how this piece turned out. I'm so happy that I was able to recycle that old wreath and I think I actually turned it into something beautiful. I love having this springy piece hanging in my sunroom. We'd love for you to take a moment and let us know what you think. Your comments fuel our creativity. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this little wooden plaque that I picked up from Goodwill Outlet. When it was at the regular store, it was 89 cent, but since I got it at the outlet, I only paid 29 cent for it, and I think it'll be perfect for this project. I'm also going to use this half terracotta pot that I also got from Goodwill Outlet for 59 cent. Now, if you like these little pots, I did check on Amazon and they sell them there as well some Sculpey air dry clay and a silicone mold. I got my mold from Amazon. This French label design that I printed out, some Mod Podge, some cornstarch, various florals from the Dollar Tree and Walmart, some floral foam, some super glue fix all adhesive, some Waverly chalk paint in white ink and ballet slipper pink, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. The first thing I needed to do was remove this little bow that was on the top and get that label off. Then I took my sanding block and I just went over this really well to remove that um, sealant that was on there and to take some of the paint off. Then I'm going to use my Waverly chalk paint in ink and give this whole thing a good coat. Now this is going to do two things. It's going to keep that design from seeping through once I put my lighter colors on there and it's going to give me a good base for my distress painting. Once my ink was dry, I took my Waverly white chalk paint and a chippy brush and I went over this with a pretty heavy hand. I wanted it to look distressed, but I also wanted it to be kind of solid there in the center. Once I got that finished, I also painted my little terracotta pot with my white chalk paint and my chippy brush. I wanted this to look old and chippy like it had been left out in the weather. Once my paint was dry, I did decide that my pot was going to blend in a little too much with my background. So I took my ballet slipper pink paint and my chippy brush and I went over this and gave it a pink coating. Now while that's drying, I am going to take my clay and I'm going to make a decorative piece for my pot. I put some of my cornstarch in there to keep my clay from sticking. Then I take a little bit of my clay and work it in my hands till it's pliable and I'm going to press it down into my mold. I take off as much as I can with my hands then I use my little scraper and scrape off the rest and flatten this out and then you can just flip it over and peel it back and you have your little design. I left this to dry for a couple of hours and then I used my fix all adhesive and my hot glue and attached this to the front of my pot. This is such a cool way to update these terracotta pots. Now I'm just going to use my white chalk paint and go over this to take away that off white clay color. This is just going to make it blend in a little more. And then once that was completely dry, I took my pink paint and went over the top of it just to bring out that detail and to give it a little punch. Now we will attach it to our plaque. I'm going to use some of my Fix All Adhesive on there for that strong hold. And I'll use a little bit of hot glue for the fast hold until that sets. We're going to put it right in the center at the bottom. 
and then I want to put my little label on the top. Now, I didn't want to cut this out because I don't like those harsh lines that you get from scissors, and my favorite way of doing this is what they call deckling. I take some water, just plain old water, and a paintbrush, and I paint around my design, letting it soak in. Then I just start tearing it, and if you go around, it's going to leave those little wispy edges that blend in instead of having those harsh cut edges. Now we'll just take some of our Mod Podge and put it on our plaque, and I'm going to spread it out pretty thin. Then I'll put my design right on top of that, and I'm going to go around those edges just making sure that it's sealed down real well. Now, I did feel like it stood out just a little too much, so I took my white chalk paint and went around this and kind of blended it in. And then once that is dry, I'm gonna take a piece of sandpaper and just go around that and make it all blend. Now, the last thing we have to do is decorate this. I'm going to put some of my floral foam into my little pot, and then you're gonna put your favorite flowers in. I started off using these ranunculus and these little white roses, but at the end, I felt like they just blended too much with the background, so I do end up changing this out to some pink roses. You use whatever goes with your home decor that you like. Once you get those in, this project is finished. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use one of these wood blend wreaths that I got from the Dollar Tree. I would have preferred to use the round foam one, but I didn't have one, so we're going to use what we had on hand. An old curtain that I got from the thrift store, but if you don't have one of these, you could just use muslin and regular lace. This crocheted tablecloth that I got from the thrift store. I'm sure they couldn't sell it because it's got this ink splot on it, but that's going to be fine because we're just going to be using pieces of it. Some crochet lace from Hobby Lobby. Some pearl beads. I got these from my mother-in-law, but you can get them from any craft store. Some distress ink from Hobby Lobby. My glue gun and some glue sticks and a pair of scissors. So the first thing I'm going to do is clip right above the ruffle on this curtain, and then I'm just going to rip. This is going to take that ruffle completely off of here and just leave me with a piece of muslin. Now I'm going to keep that because I'm definitely going to be using it. Then I just take my fabric and I find the edge of it. I'm, just, I'm loving all of this old aged pieces of this fabric. I clip in about an inch and a half and then I just rip this off into a long strip. I end up doing this twice so that I have two pieces. Now I'm just going to tie it around my wreath. You can glue this, but I didn't want to glue it to the wreath because I might want to change it out to something else later. Then I just start wrapping it around and around the wreath. And I do, you know, move over just a little bit, but I love having these um, frayed edges showing. And then once I get to the end of that strip, I glue the other strip on, and then I just keep wrapping until I have my wreath completely covered. And then once I get to the very end of that, I'm just going to use a little more hot glue to glue it into place. And then I trim off the end and I have the base of my wreath. Now I'm going to remove a strip of this lace. Now to get a full piece of it so that it's not, um, so that it has a finished edge, all you have to do is clip those little stitches and you can pull this off in one piece. But I didn't care if both edges were finished because of the way I'm going to be wrapping this. And it was faster for me to just cut it off. Now I'm going to glue down one end of this onto my wreath. And then I just start wrapping it around on top of that muslin. We're doing the same process that we did with the fabric. Now we're just doing it with the lace. I did end up having to cut another little piece of this off because I was short just a little bit. I finish it off with a little bit of hot glue and then trim it off and there's our lace wreath. 
Now I'm going to take some of this crocheted tablecloth. Y'all, I love this. It is so beautiful. And I just cut off pieces of it and then I glue it around my wreath. Now I'm not going to completely cover it with this. I do want, you know, that other lace to show. So I just cut off big chunks of it and I glue it around until I get a look that I like. I just kind of, you know, do it in patches all around my wreath. I did end up cutting off another little piece of it there so that I could get it as far around as I wanted it. And I do glue all of those little edges down to make sure that they stick and that nothing is sticking up. Once I get that all into place, I take my little pearl beads and I glue down one end of them and then I start wrapping them around as well. Now, I did not want this to be a perfectly even wrap. As a matter of fact, in some spaces I go you know further out and then I will wrap like two of them close together and then I start wrapping them further out again I want this to look like it was just kind of thrown around this wreath with no rhyme or reason these are really just a beautiful accent for this now I'm going to take some more of that muslin and I measured in a little over an inch, maybe an inch and a quarter, and then I rip off of a strip and we're going to make some flowers out of this. Now the way I do it is I tie a knot into the end of the fabric and then I take the tail and I fold it back onto it and glue it into place. And this just kind of gives me the center of my flower. Then I start wrapping my fabric around. It doesn't matter if you twist it towards you or twist it away from you. Either way works just fine. And then I wrap it around and just keep going around and around making a rolled flower. Now, ever so often I stop and I put some more hot glue on there and this is just going to help hold it into place so it doesn't fall apart. And you just keep doing this all the way around until you get a flower as big as you want it to be. Now, I like it when I can get the fabric to fold so that you can see those shabby edges to it, but this doesn't always happen and that's okay, but there are parts where it kind of, you know, sticks out and it just makes it look a little more shabby to me and I absolutely love this look. Now once you get it as big as you want it, I trim off the end and then I put some glue on the back of it and just fold it down into it and that gives me my finished flower. Now I'm going to take some of these pearls and I cut off three of them and clip off those little strings and then I'm just going to glue them right into the center. Now you don't have to do this, you could leave it plain, you could use a button, whatever you want to use. Now that I've made one, I'm going to go off camera and make two more, and I'm going to make them just a little smaller. Now that my flowers are all made, I decided that I wanted to give them a little more of a vintage look. So I took some of my distressing ink that I normally use with my paper crafts and my blender, and I just kind of dip my blender into it, and then I rub it along these edges and over the top, and that just kind of gives it more of a vintage look and makes it pop out more. Now I'm going to make a fabric bow. So I took another strip of that fabric and I figured out how long I wanted it to be. And then I took my distressing ink and my blender and I just go over the edges of this and give it more of a vintagey look. I also ran down the center of it as well. Now I'm going to take that piece of fabric and I just fold one end over and leave a loop and then I flip over the other end and that gives me two loops. I'm going to scrunch it up into the center and then I just take a piece of twine and tie it off in the middle, but you can really use thread or anything you want to. You're just wanting to tie this to make your little bow. I also want to have a lace bow, so I took some of this crochet lace and I think I got it at Hobby Lobby, but I may have got it at Joann's, I'm not sure. And I do the same process that I did with the fabric. I just fold the ends over each other, leaving a loop on each side, and then I take a piece of twine and I tie it off in the middle and trim those ends and that gives me a lace bow. I'm going to take my fabric bow and I wanted to trim off those ends a little bit. They were just a little too long and then I will put some more ink on the end of it. And then I use a little bit of hot glue and I glue the fabric bow onto the top of the lace bow. To make a middle for this, I took a piece of that other lace that I had left over from the curtain and I tie a knot in the middle of it. 
this gives me my center. Then I just glue it down to the center and I glue the ends down to the back and that gives me the perfect bow. Now we're gonna glue everything down. I took my three little roses and I glue them kind of staggered, but I get them really close so they look like a little bunch of flowers. Now we're just gonna take our bow and glue it right there below those. I love this, y'all. It's so vintage looking. To make a hanger, I took another piece of twine and I tied a knot into the end, leaving a little loop. And then I glue it down and glue a piece of the lace on top of it to help hold it. And there's our finished piece. I love this one. I think it turned out so pretty and antique looking. I'm actually going to hang this one in my bedroom. My husband's not crazy about the shabby chic look, but I think this one is so romantic and pretty. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this scrap piece of 1x2 that I had left over from another project. I always keep these because they make perfect little shelf sitters. This sunflower mold, I got mine from Timu, but you can also get something similar from Amazon. Some Waverly white chalk paint and some Apple Barrel Sunny Day acrylic paint. Some wire, I'm not sure what gauge this is, but it is flexible but still holds its shape. Some wording that I printed off from the computer. You can totally freehand this. I just like to make sure I have my dimensions, a pencil and a permanent marker, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. The first thing we're gonna do is work on our little flower because it needs time to dry. I'm filling my mold with hot glue and then I'll tap it down and make sure that it fills all the little surfaces. Now you can use air dry clay, you can use resin. I just chose to use hot glue. It's lightweight and it dries really fast. Now I'm going to cut a piece of my wire, stick it down into that, making sure that it is covered all the way around. I'm gonna even add a little more hot glue on top and then I'll set it aside and let it dry. While that is drying, we're going to work on our little block. This was already painted from a previous project. So I just took my sanding block and I kind of roughed it up a little bit. Then I'm gonna come in and distress it some more with a pencil. You just turn your pencil on the side, rub it onto your piece, and then use your finger to smear it in and it gives you beautiful distressing anywhere that you want it. Now I'm going to put my wording on my project and I'm using my favorite method. You see us do this all the time. I just print out the words I want. I scribble on the back with a pencil. Then I lay it onto my project and trace over it. And this is going to transfer it to my project. Now this is such a simple project and it's supposed to look handmade. So you can totally just freehand this and it would be so cute but I never trust myself with my dimensions. I would rather do it this way and know that I have the dimensions right than to come in with a permanent pen and then have to end up repainting it because I messed up. Once I get my letters transferred over, I fill it in with a permanent marker. Now I'm going to punch a hole in top of my block and I'm just using my awl that I got from Hobby Lobby. This works perfectly on this soft wood and you don't have to use a drill. Our glue is dry, so we're gonna pop that out of our mold. How cute is that? Don't worry about being able to see the wire in here because once you paint it, you're not going to see it at all. I'm gonna start off painting the whole thing with my white chalk paint, the front, the back, and those little sides. And then once that is dry, I'm gonna come back in with some yellow paint and paint the center of this. And we have the cutest little daisy. We'll set that aside and let it completely dry. Now we just have to figure out how far we want our daisy to stick up out of our block. And then we're going to trim off that wire, add a little bit of hot glue to the end and stick it into the hole on top of our block. We'll clean up what smushes out. And with that, this project is finished.
Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use one of these little bowls that I got from the Dollar Tree, this candlestick I got from the thrift store, some cherry blossoms I got from Walmart, some Waverly chalk paint in plaster, some alcohol ink that I made. I will put a link down in the description box below if you would like to make some, my glue gun and some glue sticks, and some sandpaper from the Dollar Tree. So the first thing I'm gonna do is give my bowl and my candlestick a really good coat of paint. Now this took about a coat and a half and I did paint all of the surfaces inside and out. I wasn't sure exactly what I was going to show and I wanted to make sure that it was really covered. Once I got the coat of paint all over it, I set it aside and let it dry. Now that our pieces are dry, I'm going to use some of my thick all adhesive that I get from the Dollar Tree and I put it on two sides of the bottom of the candlestick and then I put some hot glue in the open spaces and press my bowl down to the center of this. Now I did turn that candlestick upside down because I like the way that looked better. Now we're just going to take a piece of our sandpaper and I go all over this and just kind of rough it up, let some of these um, edges pop back out some of the detail I want this to look old and rustic it really doesn't take a lot but I love how it looks once you get it done now I thought I wanted these <laughs> cherry blossoms to be two-toned I wanted some of them to be light and some of them to have more color so I took my alcohol ink and sprayed three of the little bunches of them and just gave them some more color and then I let that dry now once it's dry, all I did was take it and arrange it inside my bowl. I did not glue this because I want to be able to take it out and put something else in there. And I did decide that the dark pink just didn't fit in with the look that I wanted. So I do end up taking those out and only using the light pink. And there's our finished project. I love how this turned out. I'm not real crazy about the little star looking things on the side of this, but I love the scalloped edge of the bowl and how it and the candlestick really comes together to look like one piece. For this project, I'm going to use this candelabra that I picked up when Kay and I did the longest yard sale across Georgia some small terracotta pots that I got from Dollar Tree, some super glue fix all adhesive from Dollar Tree, Waverly chalk paint in white, some miracle Grow indoor potting mix, I'll be using this for all the plants in this video, a six pack of succulents that I got from Walmart, some air dry clay, I'm using Sculpey, but you could use any brand, some stamps that I had on hand and some ink, we're gonna use this for distressing, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. So the first thing that I realized was that I needed to fill in all of those holes and make a solid surface so that my planners are going to adhere to the top of this. Without this, you only have that little rim and it's not enough surface area to make them stay permanently. So my solution to this was I grabbed my air dry clay and I filled it in, packing it down really well, and then I let it stay overnight to dry. Now I'm going to find out later that I should have popped this back out and let it dry on the bottom as well and glue it back in, but we all learn from our mistakes and I made lots of learning mistakes mistakes in this video. Now it's the next morning and our clay seems dry so I'm going to use my sanding block and just go over the top of this and smooth it out. Then I'm going to take my fix all adhesive and I put a drop in the center of each one of these. This is for the permanent hold. Then I put some hot glue on the pot and stick it down and that's going to give us that fast hold that is going to hold it until the other glue sets. Now you saw when I put that one on there that it lifted out. This is when I realized that I should have taken that out and let it dry, but I will go back and fix my mistake. 
Now that I have my pots on there, I'm going to use my Waverly chalk paint and I'm going to go over the whole thing and paint it white. Now I did make sure that I didn't pull up my paint in all that detail work. I just love how detailed this is and how beautiful it is and I wanted all of that to shine, especially when you start going up the stand and getting onto the candlestick. I also started painting <laughs> my pots, but this is when I finally admitted to myself that I needed to take them out and let that clay dry so that's what we did now it's the next day we have let that clay dry on the bottom and reattached these with our permanent glue and now I'm going to take my stamps and some ink and I'm just going to start stamping on my pots I don't want this to be a solid stamp I want it to look old and distressed and I just kind of layer it on there but again another lesson I should have done the stamping before I attached my pots back to my candlestick I do not know why I had the urge to make things harder for myself in this project but I absolutely did so hopefully you'll learn from my mistakes if you don't like this layered dirty look you could also decoupage napkins on here that would be beautiful now I'm going to take a piece of sandpaper and just kind of go over my candlestick. I want to make sure that all of that detail pops out and that it looks old and worn and doesn't have that fresh, pristine, painted look. I love how this turned out once I went over it real lightly with my sandpaper. It kind of made it all go together and blend together. Now it's time to put our plants in. I went outside and got some rocks to put in the bottom because these are succulents and they don't like to sit in water. So I put some rocks down in the bottom of my pots. Then I added some of my potting mix. We're gonna put a little piece of our succulent in each one and then put some potting mix around it and pat it down so that it holds in place. And once you do that, this project will be finished. I love doing this kind of thing because it just shows that you can literally make a planner out of almost anything you have around. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to use this adorable little bird cage that I found at the thrift store for $3. It's not the right color for my home decor, but I know we can make it into something adorable. Some zinnias from the Dollar Tree, some greenery from Walmart, a battery powered candle, a bird that I had left from another project, some floral foam, some Rust-Oleum white spray paint, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. The first thing I'm gonna do is take my little bird cage outside, clean it up, and give it several coats of my Rust-Oleum white paint and let it dry. Now that our bird cage is completely dry, we're going to decorate it. I take my floral foam and cut off some pieces and stick around the base of that candle holder at the bottom. This was really tight. I would have actually liked to have had more room for my flowers to go, but you know, I got this at the thrift store, so we work with it the way it is. Once I got my floral foam down in there, I took my zinnias and I have to cut them pretty close to the base to get them to fit. And you can see that I had to work with them quite a bit. I am like pulling them through those little curly wires that's there and just trying to cover that bottom. I was able to get four of them in there and I went ahead and put my candle back. And then I took my greenery and just started sticking it in around my florals. Now I've told you guys several times, I am not a florist. I just like to do what Kay says is poking posies. I just kind of stick things in in there until it's covered up and I like how it looks. Now this one is going to be one of the simplest ones that you will do, but I think it's such a cute way to repurpose something that was thrown away at the thrift store and no one wanted. Once we get all of our greenery in there, I take another one of those little sticks and just kind of pull it around. And now I'm going to take my little bird and stick him right to the top and this project is finished. And there's our completed piece. 
I am so happy with how this one turned out. I love the white color. I think it just makes it look so fresh and so cute. And those flowers in the bottom are simply gorgeous. My little bird just adds the perfect touch for my sunroom. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this wooden hexagon wall hanging thing that I got from Goodwill Outlet for 79 cents. If you don't have one of these, they have something really similar at Dollar Tree that's galvanized metal that would work just as well. I'll be using this butterfly. I made it out of resin with this mold from Timu on our live show Monday night. But you could also use some of the beautiful butterfly stickers they have at Dollar Tree. Waverly chalk paint in white and in ballet slipper pink and some florals. I've pulled a collection that I had on hand from Walmart and Dollar General, but you could use anything that fits your decor. I only use a little bit of these and my glue gun and some glue sticks. So I wanted to add this butterfly to the front of my little box to give it some interest and I'm just using some hot glue to attach it. I think the 3D stickers they have at Dollar Tree and at Hobby Lobby would work beautifully as well. Once I had my butterfly attached, I'm gonna come back with my Waverly white chalk paint and a chippy brush, and I'm giving this a very heavily distressed painting. Now, this is my taste. I love having white to pop out during spring, but you may not like that. You may like raw wood, or you may like just the galvanized metal from the ones at the Dollar Tree, and that's just fine. This is just to give you inspiration. You do it to your taste. Once I had it painted and it had dried, I'm going to come back in with my ballet slipper pink paint and I'm just using my finger to touch this and to bring out that butterfly, really make it pop. Y'all know we love pink and I thought this was the perfect little touch to our butterfly. Now we get to do the fun part. We're gonna start decorating it. I started off with greenery and these pretty pink flowers that I had gotten at Dollar General, but I did not like it. They were just so big. I love these flowers, but they didn't fit this piece. They just kind of overwhelmed it. So I backtracked and I grabbed some of this lavender. Now they have lavender at the Dollar Tree and it's pretty nice too, but I had picked up this bunch from Walmart for like three. 347 and this is what I decided to use and I was really happy with how it came out when you're looking at it now it looks like a wild um, flower field you know like you're looking out over a field that's got a bunch of lavender in it or just plain old wildflowers and I love that look because I think that's probably my favorite kind of flower so I'm just cutting pieces off I stick them down in there sometimes I have to pull them out and move them around or cut them down even more until I get the look that I like but once you get all of your flowers in here that's really all there is to it now as I said earlier you use any flowers that suit your taste this is just for inspiration and you could use roses you could use peonies there are so many options for this and then once this season is over you can take them out and put in new flowers for the new season I love flowers in the spring and this smashed can is one of my favorite projects. Let's see how I made it using Timu products. We're going to start off with one of their silicone molds. This is the rose mold that has the leaves and the bud and some of their epoxy resin. We need to mix up our resin so I'm using the little cup that came with it and I'm pouring equal parts resin and hardener into another little cup. Now I didn't need a lot so I only went to the first line and once we get it in our cup we need to stir it up really well. Now we can pour it into our mold and then we're going to kind of pull on the sides a little bit just to make sure it gets into all the nooks and crannies and we're going to leave it to dry overnight. 
once everything is set up we can unmold it and y'all it is so pretty it has so much detail that it gets from this mold and it's so lightweight now i did overfill my mold so i ended up with like a little ledge or a lip around this but i just grabbed a pair of scissors and was able to easily clip this off and it was ready to go now we're going to work on our can. I saved this from the garbage and I cut both ends out of my can. This makes it easier to smash. Then I'm just going to press down on it and smash it down as much as I can. Now one end you want to get as closed as possible and the other end you want to leave open somewhat. So I grabbed something heavy, in this case my sanding block, and beat the end together. I do want to add a little handle to my can so I can hang it if I want to. So I took an awl and I punched a hole in both sides. Now be careful not to mash your hand. Now we're going to take our little rows that we made and I'm going to use some fix all adhesive and some hot glue and attach this to the front of my can. Now that everything is set, I'm going to use one of my paint brushes that I got from Timu and some chalk paint and I'm going to paint the whole thing. Now I did make sure that I got down in all the little nooks and crannies of my rose. I wanted this to kind of have a porcelain look and y'all it really did. It was so pretty and all that detail just kind of popped out. I painted the front and the back of my can. Y'all know I like for the back to look just like the front. And then we're going to set it aside and let it dry. Once that's dry, I wanted to do some more detail on my rows. So I grabbed some watered down paint and a baby wipe. And I just kind of dabbed around on the edges and brought out all of that gorgeous detail that this mold had in it. To make a handle for my piece, I took some wire. I don't measure this. I just kind of eyeball it by pulling it off and seeing how it looks. Then I stuck one end through a hole and I used a paintbrush to kind of twist it up and make a knot on that one end. We'll press that into the can. Then I'm going to use another paintbrush and I just wrap my wire around it, making these pretty coils that I can pull out and just give some extra interest to our can. Now I did want to decorate it some more and I remembered I had these beautiful charms that I had gotten from Timu. So I grabbed one with a butterfly, I put it on the end of my wire and then just twist it up in there. And this gives me an extra decoration to my can that I think is absolutely beautiful. Beautiful. Now let's add some of our flowers. I'm using this pink bouquet that I got from Timu. I think it was like $2 and y'all it is so pretty. This is so much higher if you look at it at Hobby Lobby and it has just as much flowers and detail to it as those do. I like to cut my pieces apart. To me this just kind of gives me more control. Then I just put things in, move them around until I'm happy with it. And once you do that, this project is complete. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to use an embroidery hoop that I got from the thrift store, but you can get these at Walmart or Hobby Lobby. They're actually cheaper at Hobby Lobby than they are at Walmart. Some lace that I had from an old dress that I got at the thrift store, but you could use any lace. Some flowers from the Dollar Tree. Some ribbon from my stash. A butterfly I had left over from another project. And my glue gun and some glue sticks. Now this project is going to be super simple. All you do is take your hoop apart and then spread your lace out over the bottom hoop, then take the top hoop and press down over it. Now I'm going to flip it over and pull on those edges until I get that lace as taut as I can get it. And then I just tighten up the screw and that's going to hold it into place. Now I'm going to take my scissors and trim my lace as close to the hoop as I can get it. 
Now, I'm using some lace from a dress that I got at the thrift store. I love finding stuff like this. But you can get beautiful flat lace at any craft store and that would work beautifully as well. Once I get that finished, I take my flowers and I pull them off the stem. And then I trim off that little piece on the back that's sticking out so that they will lay flatter. And I glue the leaves to the bottom of it so they don't get separated. Now I just kind of lay it out, figure out where I want it. I'm going to use some greenery that I had left over from other projects. And then once I know where I want everything to be, I just use a little bit of hot glue and glue it all down. Now you are gluing onto lace, and I did stick my hand around to the back of this to make sure that it pressed down onto it, but be careful that you don't burn yourself. Now my butterfly kind of blended into my lace, or at least I felt like he did. So I grabbed some pink acrylic paint and just kind of painted over the edges of his wings and right next to his body to make him pop out a little more. Now we're going to take some ribbon and I cut that off and fold it in half and then feed it under my screw and pull it through itself and that kind of tightens it onto it. Then I tie a knot in the end and trim that off and that gives me a hanger. Now we're just going to attach our butterfly there to the top with some hot glue and this project is finished. And there's our finished project. I love how this piece turns out. It is as simple as it gets, but I think the lace is absolutely beautiful. It gives you a little bit of shabby chic and a little bit of summer. I love having this as part of my decor. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this charger that I got from Hobby Lobby for $1.99, this printable that I designed, printed, and cut, some of these stickers, I haven't really decided which ones yet. Some Mod Podge, some twine, my glue gun and some glue sticks, and some tools from my work caddy. So we're just going to remove the sticker from the back of our plate. We don't want to have that on back there. And then we're going to take our printable and attach it to our plate with some Mod Podge. I did put down a pretty heavy coat. I did design this printable and I will put a link down in the description box if you would like to have a copy of it for yourself. Now I'm just going to spritz my paper with a little bit of water. This just kind of softens it up a little bit and then I press it down into my plate and I go back over it with one more coat of Mod Podge. Now this was printed on an inkjet printer so I have to be careful around the wording or it will smear. If you can print it off of a laser jet you don't have this issue. Once that was completely dry, I am going to take some of these little flat back pearls that I got from the Dollar Tree and then some of these little pink gem looking things that I got from the Dollar Tree as well. And I'm going to stick them all around the border of this printable. This is just kind of hiding that edge there that we cut. Plus, it gives it a little something extra. You don't have to use the same things that I use. You could just use all pearls or you could use all gems. You could even use the little flat back wooden beads if you would like. But I had these and I really liked how they looked. So I put these on mine. Now we just need to make a hanger for our plate. I cut a piece of twine. I tie a knot in it, which leaves me a little loop. Then I put it at the top of my plate and flood it with some hot glue and cover that with paper tape for extra strength. And there's our piece. This is probably one of the most simple pieces I've ever made, but I love it. I will be having this one hanging in my craft room slash office because it is everything that I want my office to be. Thank you so much for watching today. If you saw something you liked, we hope you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all and it really does help our channel grow. We are also over on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest and would love it if you would click the link below and join us over there as well. If you enjoyed this episode, check out these videos for even more DIY inspiration. Bye y'all!